Uh, gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the programme. Sponsored by Sports Network UK, Dawn Promotions present an international middleweight contest of ten three-minute rounds. Presenting and introducing in this corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Panama, Nesta Flores. And from Coventry, ladies and gentlemen, Errol Christie. At the weigh-in today, Flores scaled 11 stones, 7 and a half pounds. Christie, 11 stones, 8 pounds. The referee for this contest, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Arnold Bryson. Well, Jim, we'll find out really whether this is going to be a surprise character. My gymnasium touts both here and in the States say that Flores is a dangerous puncher, but doesn't always take a good punch. So it looks like the one who can get off first in this fight. And if Christie has got the needle with the press, well, now's a chance for him to make amends for that, although he's had a very healthy press at one stage and was voted best young boxer of the year. But he's got just a little bit casual in a couple of fights, and he can't afford to do it with this guy. I think the Panamanian gets hit with straight punches but as a good hooker walks in and hooks well a couple of swings his leg go already look pretty strong i hope errol doesn't hang his chin he has a habit of leaning forward with his chin out a little bit too casual i hope he doesn't do that this afternoon his last fight he went down but that was really a slip it was a half punch and a slip i didn't agree with those who thought it was a knockdown punch i think there was trouble with it the canvas in his last fight too Oh, he's firing from the start a bit, Christy. I think he's taking this one a bit seriously. He realises now he's, he's had one or two early wins. And now he's uh, probably saying, hey, this fellow looks like he can absorb a fair punch. He's changed from the gold trunks that he normally wears, Christy, to the white for this one. We use this word interesting quite frequently, Jim, but it looks as though it's got the makings of it. Yeah, well, they're both uh, thinking what they're doing and looking for openings. Christy settled down nicely. He's concentrating, which is uh, one of the main worries about him. Sometimes his attitude in the past has been a little bit too casual, but uh, he looks nice and sharp. His eyes look as though they're taking in everything that's happening. So a uh, nice, uh, sharp attitude he has now. So minutes to go then in the opening. Certainly Flores is a bit open and he leans forward with a punch like that and misses. That's the time for the counter shots to come in from Christie. Not like that. Signaled that one, telegraphed it and postcarded it too. Flores lost a couple of fights in the States, but they were quite rip-roaring fights. Apparently, he had the opposition down before he was beaten in uh, Atlantic City and Florida. But the rest of them have been in Panama, which remembers a good fight country if you think about Roberto Duran, a great little champion from there. So, countdown then for the end of the first. So Errol Christie and co, but uh, when the bell goes, these fellows get out of the ring. That shows you how smart they were, although Don Davis on the right there was a good class fighter in his time. Was, uh, 17 fights, and he lost only that one to Jose Says, the Belgian. That was in 46 seconds. And as Jim Watts said, a little lack of concentration on that one against the light heavyweight and got tagged. But he recently won fights in 71 seconds and 36 so he really could do with being extended. He's never been past six rounds yet, Errol Christie. And as you know, one 
11 amateur championships on the turn and went into the Guinness Book of Records. So maybe it's done him good that, uh, as you put it, he's had a tough press, but uh, in some ways he's invited it. Second out, round two. Second round then, scheduled for 10 rounds this middleweight scrap. 11-8 Christie, 11-7 and a half Flores. Well, that was very polite of the visitor, I must say there. Sometimes they uh, throw a punch and apologize afterwards, but uh, he's been smart enough not to do that, Flores. He's 24, Christie's 21. Oh, yes. I said he'd get tagged with a hook if he, if he lays in with the long punches because he holds his head up, the Panamanian, Jim. Yeah, that's a good shot, but he handled it okay. You know, he didn't wobble. He just wobbled as the punch landed, but he recovered pretty quickly. So uh, his chin may be a bit stronger than maybe we've heard. Well, so far, there's nothing wrong with his heart. He's come to fight all right. Christy does need good testing now. I'd quite like to see this go a good few rounds and see how he copes with it. Certainly got a great variety of punches, Christy. Yeah, he's got a lot of natural ability, a lot of lovely punches, uh, power in either hand. A lot going for him. Uh, I'm delighted if they're going to start stepping up the quality of opposition because he's been, been getting away with some bad habits. And unless they step up the quality of opposition, you, you know, you'll keep uh, making the, the bad mistakes. He'll be looking for Harold Graham and the Jimmy Price result when they fight for the middleweight championship. Well, he doubled up a good left hook there to the body with a minute to go in the second. But he's standing there trading with him, Flores. So the touts are right. This fellow can fight a bit. Oh, the right hand dropped him right on the bell there. The uh, halfway mark, the 30 seconds to go. And he's not going to make this in the second round, I don't think. He was flagging as he got on the ropes. And then the downward arc of the right hand punch tagged him. I said on the bell, I meant the 30 second mark that we got notice of. And it came really, well, all punches come unexpected, Jim. But uh, he just flagged the second and they're dragging Flores back to the corner. So they got the chance of easy, easy. Have a look at the replay of the knockout, Jim, there. This is there he is, backing him into the ropes. Yeah, well, I think that it was a, a right hand landing high. It didn't look like a jaw punch to me. It looked like a right hand was caught him just above the eye. On, on the side of the forehead, but it was a lovely punch. Banged it as, yeah, it was a good punch. It landed a little bit lower than I thought it did, but a lovely punch. As soon as that punch landed, the fight was over, obviously. Just shows you when you watch the puns coming coming in at fast rate, you're not always sure of the power of them, but you sh certainly uh, spotted that one all right, didn't we, as he was going down. So let's see now what Harold uh, here now what Harold Christie has to say. He's talking to Jim Rosenthal. Harold, I said before the fight you were going in here in a very mean mood. I think that was fair comment, wasn't it? Well, I came out there, you know, just picking my shots because he's a very cagey fella. You know, he's he was ranked number ten in the world. You know, I had to pick my pick my shots. Just play it easy, wait for him to come for it. Would you ideally have liked a longer fight just to satisfy all those critics who well, keep on saying you've got to have a test? You know, I started off very slow because I thought this is a very tough guy and I know I'm going to have to do 10 rounds. And I was going out there to do 10 rounds, which in fact, you know, I only went two, but that's the way it goes. I mean, 